Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Pastor, Sunday was a pretty amazing time of, of ministries. We had a nice group of people being baptized. Yeah, the families good. there. It was just a sweet time, and the water was refreshing. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, today, Pastor, I want to tease out our uh, your Wednesday service. And our last time that we that you taught on this, we were speaking on wives submitting to husbands, to their mm -hmm. own husbands. And as you've been almost constructing the spirit-filled life that Paul is driving home and now is addressing the family uh, and has been talking about a spirit-filled life. My, my question today, Pastor, is I see that you're even going to go into 1 Peter chapter 3. I notice that Paul first addresses the wife and Peter first addresses the wife. Uh, what is the reason that both are beginning with the wife in terms of the spirit-filled life? Because the wife had it much more uh, difficult than the husband. During that day, um, a husband could be converted. He would bring his wife to church. Uh, she really didn't have any say concerning that in the Roman Greek nor in the Jewish culture. And so uh, for the wife, it was a much more difficult situation because when she came to faith in Christ, she wouldn't automatically be able to bring her children or husband the husband had the authority in her uh, life and home to the degree that it could even be dangerous for her to commit herself to Christ. And so Paul begins with her because her situation was far more difficult than that of the male. And so he speaks concerning how she may, according to 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 through 6, how she may, by the goodness of her life and character, uh, be able to to win her husband over to faith in Christ. And, and um, the way she's going to do that, he said, is that he may be one without a word, uh, simply not because the gospel isn't what is necessary to hear, believe, and to adhere to, to be saved, but by living out the message that she's already had uh, opportunity to share with him, he might see that in action and then it would give to her the opportunity to share in more detail how salvation is possible for him to have. And so because she had a very difficult um, road that she had to travel on, Peter and Paul both would first speak to the wife to be an encouragement to her because she was living in a time of great difficulty. Plus, uh, in that season in the history of the church, there was an increasing persecution that was taking place, and the church was increasingly becoming a an illicit religion, and ultimately was regarded in in such fashion by the um, by the Caesars, and so it was a very dangerous thing for the woman to convert, and to try and bring her husband to faith, and that fulfills what Jesus said when. He had said, a man's enemies shall be those of his own household. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, he came to bring a division, he said, between even husbands, wives, and wives, and, and uh, mothers-in-law, and all of those things. Families would be divided over um, the uh, conversion of a member of the family. Well, it was especially difficult for the wife. And it's, it's interesting how even as Paul addresses head of household, the male, mm -hmm. the, 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 the role of the husband, but yet they're addressed, the women are addressed first, the wife, the role of the wife. And and, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, even as he's now navigating the road to the spirit-filled life mm. and the importance of the wife being the example for the husbands down the road. Yeah. Well, you know, the wife has such tremendous impact on the family, quite obviously. And her um, her influence is uh, is is amazing and so many a, a bad husband has been uh, because of his sincere love for the woman has actually been given uh, opportunity to come to faith in Christ and I remember a lady saying one time because her husband was not only an unbeliever but was really a rebellious man uh, she had shared with a friend who had asked why she treats her husband so so well when he treats her so poorly and she said because the best life he'll ever have is now mm -hmm. and she says i want to give to him the best life he can have because the future isn't good for him 
And so it was her love for him that uh, drove her to do the things that in many ways was was a, um, a mystery to her friends. Why would you treat such a man in that way? I remember another story of a man who came home with several friends from a bar. He was an alcoholic. He came home with his friends and he said, watch this. And he said, make me some eggs. It's like three in the morning, make me some eggs. Without a word, the wife got up. She began to feed him, feed, fed him and his friends and uh, and then went back to bed and they asked why did she do that you know and the husband said because she's one of those believers in Christ and she cares for me those are the kinds of things that Christian wives have done in the past that actually impacted influenced and and caused a husband to say what a wonderful woman I have uh, I would I, I never want to lose her and not only that I want to know her forever and come to faith in Christ and though you're not married in heaven you have that beautiful relationship that that goes on through eternity amen amen and so we'll be taking you'll be taking a deeper look at this uh, Wednesday tomorrow at hopefully 7 <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and want to invite you guys to come out and join us at 7 p.m. as we have a time of worship and then we're in the, a time in God's Word and so Wednesday evenings have been pretty fruitful it's been a series that I've really enjoyed Make, and just making sure my wife is listening. You know? No, she never <laughs> listens. John, I know her. <laughs> yeah. uh, but again, I want to invite you guys to come out and join us uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. tomorrow as uh, you look more into wives submitting to their own husbands. The biblical uh, reasons for doing that. Yes, and uh, and I was looking through your notes, and, and yes, so come on out, you guys. And then, of course, on Sunday, we'll you'll hear our recording on Thursday, 8.30 and 10.45 Sunday morning. Uh, as we're going through the book of Mark, and we have our Israel meeting uh, right after July 10th, which is going to be right after Second Service yep. with Inspired Travel. So yep. come on out and join us. And again, Pastor, thank you so much for your time. Of course. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you.